Hi, good morning, Jonas. Hello, good morning. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Hi. Okay, perfect. Yeah, it's all good. Let's just wait for uh, uh, for other people to join. Yes. I, I'm not sure what's going to be our attendance today. There's not uh, some sort of uh, big items on the agenda, but yeah, let's see. We have this we have this bot which started to join these meetings, these meeting analytics. Yeah. Apparently it's not from Hyperledger and they tried to ask them to stop doing this and and they didn't. So I'm going to see if I can somehow uh, kick it out or turn it off. Well, it doesn't look like I can kick it off. That seemed to work. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it one more minute and I think we can, and then we can just start. Now, last week we had a nice attendance. Uh, we had uh, people from like almost every continent. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, sometimes, sometimes it's more of a podcast and sometimes it's a, it's a really nice discussion. It varies. But uh, I'm going to start sharing my screen and get ready. So... Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So yeah. Um, uh, um, welcome to uh, 2023, February 23rd, RSV6 community call. And uh, this is our hyper hyperledger antitrust policy notice, which we shall display before our meeting begins. So I'll just leave it here for uh, for a moment. Right, and let's get started. So, uh, yeah, again, hi, Jonas. Uh, I suppose you're here first time, right? And I don't remember joining you before. Uh, yes, I'm here first time, yeah. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Uh, really happy to see new new faces, new, uh, new voices. Uh, would, you, would you mind to just briefly introduce uh, yourself since you're joining for the first time, you know, just like... Maybe which which company you are from and like uh, what's your what's your use for IRVCX stuff stuff like that or what kind, what's your kind of tech stack? What, yes, what sure. You share. Uh, so yes, last week a colleague of mine, Rafael, also joined the call. I think first time. Ah, right, yeah, Rafael. So, yeah. Yes, we are working on the same project. Um, so for the Swiss government, um, but he's more like the mobile uh developer and i'm more in the infrastructure part and maybe also in the future um trying to uh, yeah add some features that we need to areas v6 mm -hmm. so i thought it would be great if i can maybe also join sometimes this call yeah for sure for sure i'll be happy to have you uh Maybe just just wondering, are you considering by any chance using Aries V6 on like the server side as well, if you are able to share that information or is it just a mobile case? Um, no, for us, it's just a mobile case on server uh, side. We are using Akapai. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's common pattern. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, so let's just uh, get started and uh, proceed with the agenda. Well, since you introduced, let me also introduce briefly some... Um, uh, I'm, I'm Patrick Stash. I'm, um, I'm uh, one of the maintainers of Aries V6 repository. Uh, we forked it 
a couple of years ago. It was originally developed by Evernim, then we kind of took it over and been trying to improve it over time, uh, little by little. And here we are, we started doing these community goals about a half a year ago. Um, and myself, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, um, I'm working uh, for uh, uh, APSA as a South African uh, bank. Um, and uh, yeah, there's, there's actually a few of us uh, maintaining this. At, at this point, three of us uh, participating in the maintenance of the repo. Um, mainly mainly uh, mainly javascript and node.js stack uh, moving mostly around, around the like backend and infrastructure areas as well as you yeah so now let's let's get down to agenda so i guess we covered our start meeting discussion here and uh, uh yeah today is pretty brief so uh, as for the overview of the recent items which has been done, we had a 052 release. Um, and uh, the link that was uh, released after a longer period of time, uh, it was more than a month. Um, it was more than a month. Um, and so, it, yeah, it includes a bunch of uh, goodies. Uh, as there was a huge... Uh, huge uh, rewrite uh, around the connection struct, connection um, abstraction. Uh, there was, uh, there was uh, uh, something we have added only recent, in like recent months. So um, uh, we were able to still, uh, I mean, it, it was still, uh, uh, it, it's it's it seems still reasonable to 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 do this kind of like significant changes. It was pretty new feature, um, but yeah, it's it's much better. And now we are basically thinking how to how to apply the same type stand pattern on the other state machines, uh, every state machines we have. But of course, uh, we would try to do that with uh, less of a disruption. Uh, since we were we were able to just rewrite it from from scratch, make a breaking change, but uh, for the for the other uh, other state machines state machines which has been uh, part of the repo will be probably more more cave careful and try to provide some uh, smooth smooth migration path. Uh, so this was very cool stuff by done done uh, by Bogdan. Um, next up, yeah, there was some following up adjustments to this uh, PR. So it was just some fixes, some renaming and uh, fixes around the Node.js wrapper regard to these changes. Uh, then we had part of this uh, release was also embedding VDR tools dependency in the repository. Um, Ah, and I see that uh, we also Bogdan and Miroslav joined. So uh, welcome, guys. These are my colleagues. Yeah, uh, hello. And, uh, I don't hello. know when did you guys join. If you hear heard Bogdan's or mine introduction. Uh, ever since that uh, antitrust policy. Oh, okay, right. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't know about you, Miroslav, but Jonas, uh, Miro, but uh, Jonas is a colleague of Rafael who who joined last week as well. Uh, and yeah, so now we are covering the agenda. So just doing this. Yeah, I've heard. I've, I've joined pretty much with Bogdan. Ah, yeah, I see. I see. I did. I didn't notice when when you joined. Uh, okay. Uh, and then uh, yeah, we had a uh, embedded VDR tools dependency in the repository, um, followed up by some uh, like huge uh, pur purge of unnecessary code. Um, and then some minor up updates, updated Tokyo to a patch version. And then the other updates in this release was around, were around libvcx. Uh, it was uh, one PR from Raphael as uh, a first time contributor to the repo. Always happy to get this kind of PR. Um, and then some adjustments to Node.js wrapper that also relates to libvcx uh, and CI. Uh, yeah, uh, so coming back 
here. Uh, I guess uh, I'll just once again note uh, for uh, as, as it's important information that going forward, uh, the Levy CX is considered somewhat deprecated. Uh, in fact, um, the next item on ag um, agenda here uh, is this uh, PR where we are splitting Levy CX into two crates. Uh, Libby CX as, as it is, uh, but uh, we uh, basically Libby CX will still represent Libby CX as it is today, but it's a smaller crate and we extracted its its core piece into new a new crate, Libby CX core, and this is consumed by both Libby CX and uh, the Node.js uh, wrapper. Um, and yeah, and so going forward, uh, we will be like officially deprecating the VCX along with uh, the Java and iOS wrapper, uh, which are built on top of it, uh, which in practice means we won't be adding any new features here. Um, and it will be just like minimal level of maintenance. Maybe there's a security patch or something like that that, that can be included. Uh, but just like no no active maintenance. But uh, if if uh, if there will be interested parties in taking this, uh, you know, taking taking maintenance of this over, and uh, I think we are uh, more than happy to, uh, you know, give out that that maintenance responsibility. Just we we don't have the resources to uh, maintain this piece anymore. Uh, yeah, so so we so up open open to community to, to possibly pick up, but um, that ties again to another uh, item we have on the agenda here, and that's uh, the updated README files. Uh, so this has been just uh, freshly merged this morning, um, and basically we talk about the deprecation quite a bit. Uh, uh, the main readme page is separated for like the Rust developers um, kind of introduction and for the mobile developers. And here we uh, like um, reiterate the deprecation a piece quite a bit. Uh, basically, we say the Libby CX is along with Java and Objective C wrappers are deprecated. Uh, there's a deprecation notice now, um, and basically we say that we encourage people to rather use recently merged unify aries vcx uh, however that's only in a stage of proof of concept so it's very incomplete and there's lots lots of work to be done here on the other hand uh, it has like much brighter future potential so we are looking for contributors here um as well i mean we we encourage this uh, definitely more than uh libby cx but uh it's up to community and up to people in the end what they decide to go with and maintain and work on but but from our point of view uh like this is this is the right way forward um yeah, and, and so the, the readme itself, uh, it's pretty much updates all of the readme files. So it's the readme for the, the this main readme, uh, the Aries VCX was also somewhat updated. Uh, I think I'm not gonna cover it all, but uh, uh, I believe it's much more friendly now. And it's gonna be important as Aries VCX uh, now it's going to be included in the Hyperledger edX course, um, which should be released today, 23rd, I believe. Uh, so I'm looking forward to, to see the mention there and see if we see, see if we notice any increased traction of interest as a result. Uh, now moving forward to the the stuff which is in progress there's like two uh work streams right now going on and one is from bogdan's side and one is from Miro's side so i don't know guys if you want to do um like any any update on on these items um i'll i'll, I'll uh 
oh, the, the the floor is yours you, you can you can uh, you know choose to do it just brief brief update or i don't know if you have something interesting to share go ahead well um not really it's still work in progress uh i guess the more interesting uh stuff uh, was showcased last week about the messages deserialization and the message type parsing. Right now, it's just a matter of like previously, just to get that working, I used the message stubs, and now we're I'm pretty much working on implementing proper messages, and that's almost done. Um, and then I guess the upcoming work regarding this is implementing some traits for common behaviors and some message builders where necessary. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And there's also like the, the protocol registry, which, uh, I want to rewrite and basically have static or rather compile time, a compile time registry of the protocols and their versions that are, um, supported by, you know, a certain agent and the protocols and their versions would be, um, pretty much allowed through or, or triggered. Uh, through uh, feature flags. Not sure about the feature flags right now and what they would look like. Um, I guess that's less important as of yet. Um, pretty much the idea is just having that registry that's generated at compile time. Uh, but that's pretty much, that's overall the, the last item on the list. Um, when that all is done, I Initially, I planned to, and I guess that's still right now the plan to integrate the new message scrape into Aries VCX with its current state. Uh, and then we can move on to um, refactoring some other protocol state machines like we did for the connection state machine. Um, but I actually wanted to run an idea by, by all of you. Um, I'm wondering whether there is a benefit in retrofitting the new message scrape into the existing Aries VCX since we're going to rewrite um, the protocol handlers and all that. Um, maybe it might be worth it to simply have a separate branch where we merge all these changes and we can review all these changes to the messages create to each individual protocol handler and so on uh, to basically have all these changes done in bulk and not maybe not spend time retrofitting stuff just to get it uh, refactored later. Um, do you think it will be challenging to uh, integrate? I have no idea. It's great. I, I don't know. Probably not. Uh, I don't expect it to be to be that difficult. Um, mm. I guess I, I guess we'll see at that point. I find it. Uh, I, I would rather avoid that approach. Um, I think it can be. I mean, if it's not, especially if it's not too difficult, then I would just try to, you know, keep keep the main branch updated as much as possible and iterate on that. It, it enables for like better collaboration, right? If if multiple people do some job, then uh, if it's two branches which start to di diverge a lot, it, it can be then not difficult to to get get it through. You know, merge the game. Yeah, I've also considered that, like retrofitting stuff would help with iterative approaches definitely um so yeah I, as i said i assume it's not going to be too difficult uh like the message structures the message structure itself doesn't change as much it's just about how we handle the messages um that will be different so presumably it's not going to be too difficult to to fit into the current Aries bcx Okay, well, regardless, I guess in the end you're right uh, about the iterative approach, so we can stick to the initial plan. But yeah, that's that's pretty much the update. Nothing really worth showcasing, I would say. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, perhaps Miroslav or Jonas, you have any any thoughts or comments on the you know on the Bogdan Zandia? So it's not like you know just just uh, just just me ruling it out or something. Oh, I pretty much agree that I would prefer also uh, integrating the uh, the changes uh, with the rest of the code base and merging it to master. 
rather than keep it in a, keeping it in our separate branch. Yeah, I also agree with that. Okay, so I guess there's a strong it has point. been decided. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, no, yeah. What, what about you, Mira? How's uh, AATH uh, testing going? What what's the also what's the also not much uh, not much to update on that front. I just updated Aries VCX version to uh, used in Aries agent as harness to zero fifty to zero to the latest release, and uh, there's some uh, changes which uh, had to be done associated with this to make the make the scenarios pass. And uh, these these uh, changes were merged uh, yesterday to AATH, and so the results uh, were run and are in Allure. And uh, like the Akapai interop tests are are working fine. Aries VCX versus Aries VCX, of course, also fine. Uh, there are only some issues with AFJ, but that's because uh, in other uh, the version that they use is alpha and when I was this testing against uh, the latest stable version which is 033 FJ version 033 at uh, the, like tests uh, which I which were running before uh, were were passing still so uh that's that, that's why it uh, it seems in in uh and that, or that's that's why some of the interrupt tests against AFJ are failing in in other. Um, anyway, so that's that's uh, uh, that's like all there is to uh, on this topic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and then I guess uh, for the upcoming work, I'm not gonna even put anything here. Uh, as we are currently busy with these things and I'm not aware of any sort of like active, well, I'm not uh, sort of an, uh, any active uh, other contribution going on right now other than these two and also anything anything new uh, planned up in a like close, close future. I mean, we have like huge backlog of stuff we want to do. Uh, I think we could actually extend this a little bit with the stuff uh, Bogdan, Bogdan mentioned, um, but uh, yeah, nothing, I think no new items will be starting until the next week, possibly, I guess, depending on how, how this thing will go. Um, maybe, and uh, that that's bring us to DAR and, and meeting discussion. So uh, maybe I would just, uh, uh, such as we can go maybe through the backlog here and see what we are missing and what we can remove. So so maybe I'll start with adding the stuff you Bogdan mentioned. So uh, you mentioned you uh, you would like to do the the protocol registry, right? That was one thing. The protocol registry refers to mainly to the discover features protocol. Well, actually, I have a, a comment on that. Uh, is that I'm not sure about the compile time uh, idea because uh, you know sometimes you can have a like agent, like let's say institutional agent, which or like yeah, let's say even or mobile device, let's say a mobile device, which might be uh, like including the code for credential issuance but typically and i mean currently since we don't have some sort of feature flags it, it actually always does um so so maybe it's uh like it should be actually like in runtime determined like based on you know whatever mm -hmm. the whatever the option whatever the like the user or the developer chooses to to use and explore. yeah and they can do that they can do that when they build their agent mm. essentially we uh, provide a library for building agents right so when you build an agent you can choose what versions and what protocols you want to but support. i think it's it's likely <clears throat> i mean i don't know how it will go with uni f5 for example um how the workflow in a future would be for the developers 
but you know uh, like if you look for example the pattern with libvcx like we pre-built those like wrappers and yeah and we can choose whatever uh feature flags we need for the wrapper we can expose all of them i mean i'm not even sure about like the protocols themselves all i know is that at least for versioning we should be definitely using that so if someone doesn't want to use i don't know the uh credential the issue credential v1 protocol and just want to use the v2 they should be able to do that and not only would that uh, lower compilation time but basically removes uh just code that's not going to be used from a certain, I mean, technically the compiler would remove that code anyway, but it's about compilation time. And it would make that protocol registry be completely in check with what a particular agent supports without the developer having to do anything at all uh, apart from setting up some feature flags. And I, I have, uh, mm, I feel like it will be useful to have option to kind of select the protocols you want to support like uh, on the fly um let's you say have a use like case two, for that let, let's say there's like uh two let, let's say there's a new connection protocol right you are running institutional agent and now mm -hmm. there's a connection and let's say we have connection 1.0 and there's connection 1.1 and mm -hmm you are not sure about the impact uh, you know this upgrade is gonna have on you or if it's if there's any risk involved so you want to do it kind of uh it iteratively uh, like just using 1.1 so you could you know if it's if if it is possible yeah so you could just like uh, switch to 1.1 you know somewhere but, in your configuration without redeploying and rebuilding your entire application so and um there's no reason why 1.0 and 1.1 cannot coexist it's just about being able to choose what you want so if 1.1 yeah, 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 comes but, out and we but, but then um mm, like nobody is forcing you to you can enable absolutely everything and just allow things at runtime if you really insist um but i'm i mean usually that's not how uh, you would do something like this generally you want to allow certain features so that you know for sure that if you don't want to handle something there's practically no way for someone a developer to uh code that in and, and again, the, the big idea here, like, like I said, we can even just not provide any feature flags whatsoever, um, although I would. But the whole idea is basically having that static protocol registry, um, which is created uh, at compile time. And it comprises of the, the protocols that are supported by the agent. And that would basically be done by knowing what uh, as I said, what versions are supported and whatnot. Mm, yeah, well, I guess, yeah, I guess it makes sense to, uh, I guess, so it's like a, we can have a starting that's... point, like it's like the boundary, like like you definitely don't support anything more than what you compiled, right? But I, I, I guess I just think that it would be nice to have option then to uh, like to opt out maybe on the fly you know so like you can actually even though you compiled uh you know connection 1.0 and it's in your code and technically you support it like you should be able to actually tell RSV saying right. like actually i don't want to use this even though it's you know compiled i don't want to have it in a uh in a discovery you know protocol listed right so um essentially this is just about i mean there's definitely some some reason why um you would generally support certain protocols and but you don't want to expose that to maybe some newcomer like a new connection or something like that someone that like an agent that you do not know um so there's like it's not about sending only that protocol registry like exactly that protocol registry every time it's about having that as a baseline yeah, to yeah, what yeah. you support and then you can obfuscate certain protocols or certain versions that you don't want to uh, 
you know you don't you don't want to provide um so that can definitely be done and probably should be done uh and in terms of like it, it would be cumbersome probably to have someone like log in a, a feature flag for absolutely every minor version of every protocol so we can have a lot of uh, flags that would incorporate uh, other feature flags like we could have an old flag that basically says yeah just compile everything i want to support every single version that is being provided um, or just have common things or we can have a latest flag that basically supports just the latest versions of all protocols i don't know i don't know about the organization i didn't give that that much thought yet um, but basically as i said the the whole idea is having that protocol registry as a baseline which um, really just means that these are the, the protocols that are coded in, in in the agent and whether you you know you want to manipulate that a bit and remove some stuff that's that's up to you that sounds good okay and then then we are in sync i think that sounds good yep okay so let's do the uh, protocol registry um um uh, compile time protocol registry boundary i will call it as so you don't do definitely don't do anything else outside of what you compiled um the register what what is this about the cloning of the doc crates uh i don't uh, actually i don't remember i believe this is uh this was typed on um uh, based on some some something you found um, I think it was some changes you wanted to in, in the, the. I think it was about like reducing cloning, but not. I don't, I, it doesn't have anything oh. to do with it. It's just about reducing cloning. Ah, okay. Just okay. It was just across the board. Okay, so reduce the cloning. Reduce cloning. And those two are basically what I'm like the the reduced cloning and the traits, uh, like the macros, replacing macros with traits. I'm gonna cover that in the messages. Yeah, uh, so I'm gonna just delete this since this is technically already yeah. in progress, right? Um, yeah, the, the, you can re remove the reduced cloning too, basically okay. covering that. Too. All right. Yeah. Uh, then we have the state pattern uh, for the other state machine. So I think this is still intact. Um, then we had. Ish, implementation of issuer side using the credx libraries yeah this is uh definitely still outstanding we have a verifier implemented with credx by george uh, but yeah this is i i don't believe somebody's working on this right now and it's going to be important as we want to eventually uh migrate away from vdr tools dependency so yeah, this is still waiting for us. Uh, I'll be bigger task possibly. Uh, then we had the coupling. Uh, okay, I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure about this given the state uh, state pattern refactoring. Uh, I'm just not sure how it's gonna still fit in or if it makes even sense. Uh, this was a duplicate. I don't one. think it will make that much sense, really. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. VCX will be an implementation of, of protocols. So. Mm. Yeah, I'll I'll remove this probably at least for now, and maybe we can close the issue too. Um. I'll see after the meeting what kind of um, a reasonable comment I can write here and close it up um refactoring okay unified state machine approach uh, this was this is also something what doesn't really apply as we um uh, we are essentially gonna rewrite the state machines with the with the state pattern and then that's essentially the unifying itself so i'm as well gonna um, delete this i don't think it makes sense to invest in uh some sort of unification of the current approach you're using. So I'm deleting this one. And wait, that was the issue linked there. Okay, I'll close this one too, probably. Uh, I'll remove this. 
uh, enable out of band tests in AATH. That's what Miro is working uh, working on right now. So I'll just link this uh, this here. Then we had eliminate usage of mediated connection in tests. I think that's still valid. Um, as mediated connection is um, similar to LV6, also deprecated in long term, although we still have it and support it. I mean, as long as uh, IOS and Java wrapper exists, mediation connection will exist in the code base, probably, possibly behind a feature flag. But it's going to be, but the focus should be to start using the simpler version of the implementation. Um, so I'll just make it a bit more specific um, in favor of connection non mediated. Uh, DDO is a first class citizen. Um, I think. Uh, I'll have to look into what I meant by this. Uh, I think there were some ideas like, uh, I think there were some ideas uh, as to what kind of patterns we should reduce and we should kind of, there, there's places in code where we are passing, I think some sort of arguments, maybe like, um, some Aries service or some sort of internal abstraction. And I believe that DDO should be used instead. So that's why I think I originally have written this point, but at, at current moment, I cannot recall the specific places. So I'll leave it there and maybe take a look um, uh, if I can describe this somewhat more specifically and, and decide if we shall keep it or not. Uh, adding more typing across the code base um that relates to like the usage of in some places in code we use string where we know it's actually url uh so i think this is still valid and will be partially addressed by the work being done by bogdan right now but i think there's also other places possibly where we deal with urls and and there's and in general i mean this applies not only to urls but also, there's many places across the code base we use string, um, but we should instead have some sort of a DID type. I mean, we are not uh, really leveraging a Rust typing enough. So as, as a two example, I'll just write here. Uh, um, the DID type will, will like require work in itself. I believe we talked about this. Yeah. Uh, that we need to basically create, maybe you can even add this to the list, that we, we need a DID parser uh, and implicitly a DID type. Because essentially we, we have to parse all the components of a DID properly um, to handle them correctly. Yeah. Um, and the URL doesn't really take care of that because it doesn't recognize the schema or the host and it's basically, it doesn't parse it correctly, but essentially that's what the IDs end up being. They're sort of like a U, URIs. So, um, yeah, we, we kind of need a parser for that. Mm -hmm. And I think we can also hear this brings me to DDO resolver, which is also not yeah, the DDO resolver too. So we need yes. to implement, uh, the, Resolver, but we do have issue for that. So I'll just link it there. Uh, resolver is here. Uh, where is it? There we go. And then, yeah, implementation of new protocols. That's kind of a long, longer term issue. We, we should probably first do the state patterns across the board and only then start adding actually new protocols just to make sure that everything's nice and clean and before right. adding new features. And yeah, that's that's all for the backlog. Do you guys, Jonas, Miroslav Bogdan, have anything else you think we should add here? Anything comes to your mind? Um, no, not really. Nothing else for me either. 
All right. Okay. Uh, so then uh, we came to the end of our page and just blank white space here, which means there's nothing else to uh, cover, I guess. Uh, well, but before before uh, we sign out, um, since this is like end meeting discussion for anyone, do you guys, anyone have anything else to cover or any question or discussions? Uh, all, 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 all good from uh, your side, Jonas. Don't you have any um, uh, questions or stuff since you guys are like a recent adopters? You know, don't you need any like assistance, help, or anything? And um, no, currently not really. So, at least from my side, um, at the moment, it's more like a side topic. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it will be a bigger topic um, in. I guess April. Um, yeah, but for us, it's then it will be more like um, yeah, new protocols uh, that's already in the backlog, and maybe also a big thing for us would be to also support Akapai as a mediator. So, like to support the V6 agency and the Akapai. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Yeah. So that would basically require implement. Uh, we can add it here in the backlog actually. Like it would be nice. Let's say it's nice to have, uh, or like I, I'll just put not nice to have. I'll just put it here. Uh, it's a it's a valid uh, um, feature in every ecosystem. So, uh, Akapai Mediator, I suppose, is speaking the pickup protocol v2. So, in order to support that, we would need to implement um, Mediator, um, Mediator every Mediator client. Uh, pick up protocol v2 so currently yeah. we have mediation client but that's specifically for the vcx agency node which is kind of uh, proprietary protocol implementation i mean it's yes. open source but it's custom uh so this would be a somewhat similar but it would be new client speaking different protocol so yeah, that, that would be cool. And that would be useful for the the Uni FFI uh, wrapper as the Uni FFI wrapper itself is, is not going to be using the V6 agency node anymore, but it will definitely, in order to be useful, it will need to have some sort of mediation support, ideally. And uh, it would make sense to implement something like that and incorpor incor incorporate it there. Yeah, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, very well. So I think that's it. Uh, thank you guys for joining. Um, wish you good good day and a pleasant weekend. It's coming soon, and I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank Have you a good one. Too. Bye bye. Bye.